Hey, it's Jen with another Tech Tips 411 tutorial. Today I'm going to show you some of the new features and updates that have been added to the Flipgrid camera. So if you are interested in EdTech tips and tricks and tutorials, please make sure you subscribe to the channel so you're alerted of future videos. Let's dive in. So they've added quite a few updates to the camera and I want to show you what those are and some other features that I think are pretty cool. They're going to help you use Flipgrid to amplify your student's voice. I absolutely love Flipgrid. Flipgrid is such a powerful tool because it allows you to create engaging videos with the Flipgrid camera via the web, which you can access on any device that has a web camera. And it's great if you have Chromebooks in your schools, this is an opportunity for your students to create really powerful and engaging videos. So I just want to highlight a couple of things on the camera that are new and some cool features that I think you would want to know about. You can actually have a couple of cameras and switch back and forth. So if you connect a second camera to your device, you can go down here to these options and you can choose which device you're actually using. So as you can see, I've got one camera over here, but maybe you want to connect a webcam to your device and you want it to recognize the web camera versus the built-in camera because it's a better quality. You can actually go down here. I've got a couple of different ones. I'm going to switch over to another camera. And as you can see, I have a different camera. So that is a great option. Before you had to use up here, you had to make this change the settings in Chrome. Once you acknowledge which camera you want to use, you can actually go in here under options and change out clicking on device settings. Kind of a cool thing to know there. I also want to point out this is where you also can upload under options. You can upload a clip. So if you record something on your iPhone or Android device and you want to be able to upload it and use it or you've recorded it and it lives in your Google Drive and you want to choose to upload it, you can do that. You can do mic only now, which is cool that uh, we know we have a lot of students that don't love being on camera and I totally get that. You can use the mic only option. You can also use the mirror video, which is to flip it depending on how it looks on camera. I'm using a green screen for editing purposes, but you don't have to have a green screen now. And I'm going to show you why in just a minute, which is super cool. I can mute, I can record my screen. So that means if I want to do a screen recording, I can actually choose to pick a camera. I can choose my mic and then I can start a screen recording and I can pick to record which is really cool for students to demonstrate their learning, for them to share a presentation and highlight their learning. So those are under those options right there. I wanted to point out those things because uh, a lot of the good stuff is hidden under, uh, under the hood, so to speak. And so I wanted to point that out. This is the record button right there. We're going to play with that in a minute, but let's dive over here to the effects. When we click on effects, there's quite a few of them we're going to dive into, but the first one is filters. And I think filters is a really cool way for students to create a mood or different effects for their videos. So you can choose different filters. It jazzes it up a little bit. But if we're talking about a project, for example, in social studies, and it happens to be a recreation of something that happened at, from a historical time period, I can use this black and white effect to create that mood. I think that is such a cool way to use filters to jazz up videos. We know our students like using these and TikTok and Instagram and all of that, but they've added a bunch more filters, including they can pixelate themselves. You know that they're there and participating, but they're not on camera. So the filters is so much fun. They've added quite a few new filters. I love the vintage ones. Again, it just creates a mood for students' videos. We have text, so we can add in text to the camera so I can actually type. So I've added tech tips 411. I can actually change the font here again if I decided I wanted something different. I like the superpower one. Uh, you always just click back to get to the option. So I'm going to go to color. I'm going to choose blue. I'm going to choose the stroke color. I'm going to choose the next blue. And then the background color, choose the last blue. So now if I go back here, when I'm done, I click off of it. And now I've made it this cool little text, uh, a Tech Tips 411 logo. If I want to clear it, I can just clear it. But if I inadvertently do that and I'm like, oh, I didn't mean to do that, I can actually click undo. So the next cool thing is the ability to use a pen. Now you're like, a pen? This is really cool if you're using touch devices because you can use it to annotate on the screen. So I can actually annotate. Try a lovely little circle here. 
little smiley face. What's cool also is that you can use, if you have one, you can use like a tablet. This is a Wacom tablet that lets you write uh, and annotate, or if you are on a touch device, students can use it to write uh, on the screen using their finger, or you can use that on the mobile device being able to annotate as well, which is pretty cool. So I can actually undo it one stroke at a time. And if I were like, oh, actually I want that back, I can redo it. Pretty cool option. Again, we go back out of the pen. I could have changed the color. I can change the width of the pen. Uh, next up, we're gonna look at the board, but a lot more boards here. So you might be thinking, Jen, what is a board? A board actually gives you a space and it turns this into a split screen. So uh, I like this new one, which is the sticky notes. And notice what it did. It actually gave me a split screen effect. So I can actually drag this over either direction to make this a little bit smaller so it could be one third of the screen. And so now I have this space where I can add notes, I can add the stickies, I can add emojis and things like that. But as you can see, I've got just different textures that they've added, lots of new ones. I love this little Galaxy one, one of my favorites. But as you can see, quite a few, they've added more of those boards. If I don't wanna use the, that split screen again, I can just take that off and go back to our main effect here. So I can add in stickers. I can search emojis so I can add in tons of different emoji stickers. I wanna add my little sticker right there. Uh, and I can also add in animated GIFs. That is a cool option that you can add in as well. Uh, so just another level of, of interest to add to it. So um, I'm gonna add in my American flag here. So already I've made this a more interesting video. I haven't started recording yet, but I can set the elements I want on there. So a cool thing is, is that when you add something, you can also undo it and then redo it. So if you want it to appear on screen, this is a tip that I share with the students that I work with. I said, you know what's cool is that you can go ahead and add it, undo it, and then start recording. And when I hit record, I could just hit redo and it's gonna add it back in there. So it's kind of a cool way to have something appear without having to stop in the middle of your recording. Uh, looking at these effects, I can go to media. I can add uh, my own by uploading anything. It has to be a PNG, JPEG, GIF, or I can upload a video. So now I've got lots of options of things I can add. Add in a frame. They've added some more frames here. It just kind of jazzes up. These are ready-made frames uh, if you want to. I like that bokeh effect. That one looks pretty cool. Several more frames available. So already, I haven't even started recording. My video looks pretty cool. I do you want to point out this other new feature and that is the backdrop. So if I click on backdrop, I have ready made ones or I can use it just to blur my background. So if I do that, notice it added that blur effect and it's pretty good. I do have a green screen behind me, but this works without a green screen. So I was working with students remotely during distance learning last year and we were trying to do a weather project and we wanted to be able to use a background. Normally it was a green screen project. Now we have the ability to put backgrounds in here. So as you can see, I can blur out the background. Obviously you're not gonna wanna do a lot of hand movement because you're gonna see that, but I can also choose some backgrounds that they already have. This is like, well, this is like a futuristic city. There we go, let's go to outer space. Got a cool little motorcycle ride here. I've got a bunch of different ones that are available that I can use to make this interesting or really for privacy for students if they're if you have them working from home and they need to be able to record their video the other cool thing is that you do have the ability to use a photo or video as a backdrop or use your screen as a backdrop so now i can make engaging content and i'm going to hop over here and if i share this screen now if i'm, ta I'm talking about flipgrid in front of the flipgrid website how cool is that so if you were trying to explain a concept to your students i can do that and now I can also look at this. I can move myself around and I can resize myself. I have this powerful picture in picture effect of me ex talking about Flipgrid and I'm on the Flipgrid website. How cool is that? So notice uh, I can use that backdrop effect. I can even upload my own image or video. So if I wanted to bring in a video loop that I found uh, that's on a, a stock video website and I'm talking about a particular location uh, for social studies, I could bring in that video or I could even upload my own background that I've created. So an image I've created in Google Slides or drawings or Canva or Adobe Spark, I can make that the background as well. This new backdrop feature is so awesome. It's so powerful and the ideas are limitless. So now that I've showed you some of the cool effects features and the new backdrop feature, I wanna show you what it looks like when you record and how you can uh, edit and publish your video. 
So I'm going to hit this record right here. I get that countdown so I can get ready. Flipgrid is one of my absolute favorite tools for students to amplify their voice. They can easily share what they've learned in class or just connect with you by sharing how they're feeling about a number of subjects. So I've recorded my first one. If I didn't like it, I can hit this retake options and effects. And so now I could go in and I could change my background. I could change other things. I want to go to next. Flipgrid is one of my absolute favorite. So I've recorded one clip and I want to add another. So now I'm going to add a, something else. There's my countdown. Flipgrid is a student voice tool that can be used in all subject areas across all grade bands. You can use it in math, science, social studies, English, as well as in art, band, chorus, so many different subject areas. So I've recorded that other one. All right, I'm going to click here and I'm going to go next. And notice now I have two clips. So I recorded my first thing. I recorded my second. I could rearrange the clips. I could also go in and actually shave off the beginning or the end. So just know you cannot trim in the middle, but you can take off the beginning of a clip and the end of a clip and then just reshoot what you need to and then add more. So I can also delete a clip, but once I've shaved it down, so I'm going to move, remove that just a little bit there. Notice it's going to go frame by frame and I'm going to see where I naturally stop talking. Click confirm. So the other really cool thing and new feature that's been added to Flipgrid's shorts camera is the fact that I can add in music. So I've added those couple of clips here. I can choose to add music right here so I can click add music. And as you can see, it has different categories of music. I got chill, I got fun, energetic, inspiring, sentimental, and cinematic. So I can go through here and add copyright free music that is appropriate and I can add that directly into my video. So I'm just going to pick one right here. I can play it so I can test it. If I want to get something that's more uh, energetic. And I can choose to hit that plus and it's going to add my music. Testing one, two, three. It added it right in to my video. And you can see it says out of the streets is on there. Pretty cool. Now I've got two clips. Flipgrid. I'm going to click next. Now that I've got my two clips and I feel good about it, I can use a select a frame, which is great. So I could sit here and, and find where I was actually smiling. Maybe. Let's see if I don't want to do that. I can actually also take a selfie. I can go in here and add other effects and use a different backdrop. So for that could be different, but I'm just going to take a selfie. Then I can click confirm and it's going to be added. So as you can see, Flipgrid is such a powerful tool. You will be amazed with what your students can come up with and what you can do as well to create engaging videos for instructional purposes in your classroom. Thank you so much for watching. If you found this video beneficial, please give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't already done so, subscribe to the channel.